Excel is great for working with data, but what if it's great for organizing your life too? Well, believe it or not, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic calendar in Excel that automatically updates depending on the month or year selected. Let's jump right into it. I already built the template for the calendar for the sake of time, but all I did was create month and year dropdowns and listed the days of the week starting with Sunday in the row below. Then I added some formatting by adjusting the size of the date cells, adding borders, aligning the text to the bottom right corner of the cell, and highlighted Sunday and Saturday blue to make the weekend stand out. I'll also drop the link to this template in the caption below so you can download it and follow along. Once the calendar is set up, we need to create a series of dates to fill the calendar using the sequence function. If you're unfamiliar with the sequence function, it is a dynamic function that creates a series of numbers depending on the arguments entered. So to fill our calendar using the sequence function, select the first Sunday, type the sequence function, and then enter the number of rows in our date series as the row argument and the number of columns as the columns argument. There are six rows in our calendar, so I'm going to enter a six for the rows and then enter a seven as the columns because there are seven days in each week. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to enter the date of the Sunday on or before the first of the month selected as the start argument to fill the correct dates throughout the calendar. To calculate this date, we need to take into consideration the weekday that the first of the month falls on so that we can backtrack to the Sunday before as the starting point. For example, if the first of the month falls on a Wednesday, we can subtract three days from that date to calculate the Sunday before. I'm going to enter a one as the start value for now and break down this calculation step by step for you to the right so that you can see what each function is doing. Step one is to convert the month and year selected in the dropdowns to a formal date that Excel can read using the date value function. To do this, enter the date value function and then enter the month and year as the date text argument by selecting the month, entering an ampersand symbol, and selecting the year. Enter the function and as you can see, the function converted this text string into the first of the month. Step two is to calculate the day of the week this date falls on using the weekday function. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the weekday function in the cell below, select our date as the serial number argument, and enter the function. Now remember, the weekday function returns the day of the week the day falls on from one to seven, one being Sunday and seven being Saturday. So this six is telling us that March 1st falls on a Friday. We are looking for the date that falls on the Sunday, so the last step is to subtract 5 from this date to return the date that falls on the 1. Let's go back into our formula and enter our full function as the start argument by entering the date value function and selecting the month and year to get the first of the month. Next, we need to subtract the weekday number that it falls on by entering a minus sign and then wrapping the date value function in the weekday function. Finally, we need to add one back to this value because we only need to subtract five days to return the date that falls on the one, not six. Okay, now that we've entered the number of rows, columns, and the start date for our date sequence, let's go ahead and enter the function to populate our calendar. This is looking pretty good, but let's clean up the dates a little bit so that we can only see the day of each date because we already know the month and the year. To do this, we need to add custom number formatting by selecting all the dates, opening the number format dropdown on the home tab, selecting more number formats at the bottom and choosing the custom category. Enter the custom format D semicolon at symbol to return just the day and then hit okay to apply the custom number format. Much better. One final touch I like to add is to gray out the dates that don't actually fall within the month because they can be a little bit distracting. To do this, we need to add a new conditional formatting rule by opening the conditional formatting dropdown on the home tab, selecting new rule, and then choosing use a formula to determine which cells to format as a rule type. Now we just need to enter a formula that checks to see whether the month of the date is different from the month selected in the dropdown. So I'm going to enter the month function, select the first date and unlock it by pressing F4, enter the does not equal command, and lastly enter the month selected in the dropdown by entering the month function again, and this time selecting the month dropdown, entering the ampersand symbol, and selecting the year dropdown. Now that we have our formula, let's set the formatting by pressing the format button and setting the font to a light gray color on the font tab. Hit OK to apply the new role, and our calendar is complete. The best part about this calendar is that it's completely dynamic, 
So no matter what month or year you choose, the calendar will automatically update to reflect the correct dates. When I say you can do anything in Excel, I truly do mean that. This dynamic calendar is a great example of how versatile it really is. What should I create next? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel for more.